Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio by a good friend of mine now, Dr. Reagan Archibald. Reagan, what's up, brother? How are you? Good. Good to see you again, Jay. It's good to see you too. So we just had a technological disaster and this podcast is starting a couple minutes late, but better late than never. So let me give you guys uh, Reagan's bio. He is a peptide expert. I was actually on his podcast recently to discuss peptides. He's also a licensed acupuncturist and a functional medicine, of course, practitioner. He brings immense innovation and cutting edge options for those looking to recover from a variety of issues. Uh, so we're going to be talking about a lot of amazing stuff today. Obviously, peptides front and center, probably bioregulators, you know, going down the whole health optimization front. But as you and I were speaking on your podcast, you know, I want to give you the option or, or the opportunity to speak here too. Obviously, and, and, and for the record, today is March 23rd, of course, 2023. So we are in a very interesting time, right? Like you can look at, you can look at this right now as like glass half full, glass half empty, you know, if I was going to present the glass half empty side, you know, I'd be all the financial analysts and the people in the banking industry and everything that's happened in the last two years. But as you kind of said, and I know you're with me, um, you know, we're on the cusp, if not already in the golden age for biomedical technologies, uh, you know, health optimization, you know, new frontiers and peptide science and bioregulators and all these things. So, you know, just kind of give us, you know, and in its opinion, of course, but just kind of give your take on where the world is going, you know, over the next three to five to say 10 years, are you a buyer of this planet or a seller? <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting, that's a great way to kick it off, Jay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the way I see it is um, if you look at someone like Tim Nelson, who's a cardiologist, MD, PhD, who has got one of the first FDA clinical trials approved for pluripotent stem cells in in a, you know heart. So instead of needing a heart transplant now, he's actually proven that he's got a safe methodology of simply injecting stem cells into newborns who have uh, heart defects and regrowing that part of the heart that never formed in utero. And so I look at that as like, I think we're on this explosion of new innovations that are coming out when it comes to healthcare and regenerative medicine. And if we can hang on, if you can live healthy enough for the next 10 years, then there's some age reversal therapies that are real and they are, uh, I think it will revolutionize everything we're doing. And then, you know, as far as the financial crisis, I think too many people were betting on industries like tech companies, right? putting money into tech companies, hoping that they would get the lottery. It was a, it's a lottery win. And so pretty right. soon Silicon Valley banks are going to collapse. And, and so, um, so I think things are fine in the United States, especially, um, do you do you follow uh, Peter Zion's work at all, Jay? Yeah, I do. Um, I, I think he's got a very good, uh, you know, he's pretty accurate in his predictions. Um, but I think we are are set up for an enormous uh, world of abundance and uh, and just energy and love and exchange. I'm I'm really excited for the future personally. And I yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, by the way, I, I'd like to you know, and I know it's not uh, kind of off topic, but the whole. Uh, tech industry, right? The Silicon Valley, the nonsense that has come out of there in the last 10 years, you know, where they're just gambling on this, gambling on that, you know, obviously they're attempting innovation, but when you don't have an actual proof concept and then you get a bunch of people, you know, who are obviously prone to be risk, uh, you know, compulsive, that's what you, that's exactly what you're seeing. I mean, all of that nonsense, you know, I mean, there's all these, you know, call them shit coins and crypto stuff that is just absolutely never 
there was no proof of value or proof of concept or anything. It was literally a smoke and mirrors hype machine. So all of that stuff had to come out. You know, yeah. I mean, look, I, you and I both know people probably that have lost fortunes, you know, in quote unquote crypto in the last year, you know, with, oh, yeah. you know, with XTC going down and now obviously this, you know, Silicon Valley bank, you know, venture, which was again, all just venture capital money. It was again, speculation. It's like literally going to Vegas and putting all of your money on red. Yeah. And then riding red out for you know a year. I mean, it, it, you're right, dude. And 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 look, in my personal experience, in talking to people like you, you know, almost every other day, there's so much expansion. You know, everything yeah. in the universe is contraction and expansion, right? It's literally how the world works. Like we expand, we contract. We expand, we contract. It's like the story of life. And right now, there's so much more expansion than there is contraction. It's just you have to be in quote unquote the right place. And if you're not, you can find the right place rather easily with technology, you know, with the internet, with, you know, again, being able to communicate with people from far diverse places and diverse cultures. So I'm totally with you, bro. I'm a buyer. Um, I do think that there will be, you know, some, um, some, I, I, let's just call it not downtimes, but there will definitely be some blips on the radar as we, you know, get rid of failed systems, you know, all yeah. the old archaic, you know, brick and mortar, you know, very capitalistic, you know, let's just call it the corporatocracy, right? Where there's only one winner and everybody else loses. That's not going to work anymore. Right. Everybody yeah. has to be able to get value or derive value or gain benefit, whether you're poor or rich. And so, you know, a lot of the legacy systems, I think, do go down and there will be some blips in the road. You know, all of us are attached to them in some way, shape or form. You know, I'm sure some of us will be with banks that will probably not exist much longer. Right. You know what I mean? And and obviously there'll be new forms of currency and everything. But dude, I'm totally with you, man. Like when you look at bioregulators and you look at peptides and you look at what's coming, you know, just in that field, I mean, it's unbelievable. Like you said, man, medicine itself, allopathic, if there's anything that's a legacy system that's in danger, it's allopathic medicine. Mm, yeah. The education system and the healthcare system. Those are the two that are 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 going by the wayside very quickly. And I think uh, in in the United States, anyways, I think the FDA is is really the, they're starting to understand that there's a greater desire from the human, the at least the public in the United States, where we want different answers, we want solutions that actually right. really work. I mean, right now, I, I mentioned we're hosting a retreat, so we've got 15 high level entrepreneurs here. They're getting regenerative therapies. They're doing more for their health uh, in a day than they've done in a year or and ten years. I could argue 10 years. Some, yeah. Some of them is yeah. 10 years. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. deploying new peptides, vitamin IVs, all these great therapies. And that's what people are looking for these right. days, looking for answers. Cause you know, I, I look at, um, healthcare and our model is, is, is similar to the financial model. It's like, right. well, you've got an infection. We're going to put all our bets on this one antibiotic right. and we're going to, we're going to zap that thing. Uh, it's no different than us, uh, hedging all our bets on cryptocurrency or right. something speculative right. at best. Um, but man, now that we're starting to step back and we say, well, um, what if we don't uh, look at things differently? The next 10 years of your life, uh, you could literally go broke. You could have the worst health you could ever imagine. Uh, and and that's where a lot of people are choosing right now. They will put their head in the sand to do nothing about this. But the ones who are really uh, ready to make a difference, uh, those are the ones that you and I want to talk to today. That's exactly right. You know, it's funny. Um, for our first bullet point, we can just segue right into it is obviously functional blood testing. But um, dude, you know this, like, I mean, I'm sure you laugh at this now because you and I are really veterans in this space, but like I get doctors, bro. And, and again, I know you know this, but I get doctors every day who, re who reach out to me from all across the world and it's a blessing, but it's somewhat of a curse too. And they're like, Hey man, like, how do I, get a wholesale program from like, you know, a research chemical company, or, I mean, it's like, because right. like you said, I mean, the reality is, is that doctors who are tuned in and attuned to what is happening, they know about peptides, but if they're in Europe or they're in, you know, even Canada, for God's sakes, anywhere in the EU, they're literally like, uh, Reagan J like, where do we get these? And like you and I are like, uh, well, I mean, so it's like you can only imagine how big the market really is mm -hmm. because there's still a, what I'd say probably, you know, and I don't think I'm exaggerating this. I'd say that still 80 percent 
of the world has no access to these, bro. Think about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was on a, a call with a doctor from India yesterday who's a patient of ours. And uh, she said, hey, here in India, people want the peptides. And actually, it's it, there's pharmacies there that are making a lot of the peptides. She can't she can't get like a Mod SC or 5-amino-1-MQ has been challenging. Uh, we're helping her find a source for epitalin. But um, but in general, uh, India seems to be a place where people want the peptides. They're looking and they're trying to figure out where to find it. And so, um, so I see that to your point, 80% of people don't know where to get them. Um, I think there's some big emerging opportunities in India. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you hundred percent. Um, everywhere. I mean, everywhere. I mean, I mean, even in the U S right. Like there's still like you, cause you mentioned the FDA. I mean, dude, the FDA still doesn't have, they don't know what's going on. I mean, their, their head is so far up there. You know what, like with it come, when it comes to peptides, like, you know, there's eight or nine that are FDA approved now. And then they're like all like just, you know, spinning their wheels, attempting to figure out like, well, do we deny these, you know, cause obviously, you know, they're still going after compound pharmacies, like, you know, who are prescribing peptides that are quote unquote, not FDA approved off label, which is totally legal by the way, mm -hmm. but yet not going after research chemical companies where they know that everybody, you know, who uses a research chemical company is quote unquote indemnified because they're promising that they're using them on their laboratory research animal or whatever. They're not for human use or human consumption. I mean, you know, the deal. But I mean, they also know that that's not the case too, that doctors are ordering from them because again, where else can doctors get them if they can't get specific things? And then of course you got the cost differences. So it's, it's, it's a very interesting time, you know, I would say to be alive and even more interesting to be in the space that you and I are in because it's all evolving. But as you said at the very beginning of the show, dude, they cannot deny these people will find them. If they, if they, if we woke up tomorrow, Reagan on Friday and we found out that the FDA, cause you know, you've seen it, it's going around now that they're, they're, they're thinking about regulating telemedicine, yeah. that they're, they're, they're going to stop doctors from prescribing, you know, hormonal optimization, quote unquote, controlled substances. I mean, think about it. testosterone as a controlled substance. What kind of a sham is that? But like, you know, they're talking about this. And so it's like you and I both know if they do that, that'll be the end of the FDA because then every single person on this planet that's already hormonally optimized will like, oh, well, you're not stopping me from getting my hormones. You're not stopping me from getting my peptides. You're not stopping right. me from getting my growth hormone. So then they will all just like form a gigantic underground market and then the FDA wouldn't even make money. <laughs> <I could. laughs> yeah, I've never thought of it that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what would happen. I mean, you know, we, yep. we, we, we talk about these things, you know, behind closed doors. And now I'm talking about it right now because, like, what are they going to do, bro? Like, I mean, literally, how are they going to regulate when there are millions of people working with telehealth providers who, as you said, have literally revolutionized their lives? Yeah. Yeah. And when something works uh, and even in a, you know, you mentioned the word capitalism, you know, capitalism is more of a methodology and not an ideology. Right. And so right. it, the methodology means that if there's value in the marketplace, then consumers will go after that thing that that's most valuable to them. And even if you try to suppress it and hold it down from bureaucratic organizations, the constitution of the United States is somewhat protective, especially in the, the 10th amendment, which protects the patient doctor relationship. And so, um, you know, I, I, I look at it and I say, well, there's there's amazing things that happen, not only in the United States, but elsewhere. But at the core, if someone's going to make a change, uh, they need to make a change, in, in my opinion, um, that's based on facts, that's based on science. A lot of people come to us and they say, hey, I want to really optimize my hormones or I want to get all my peptide pathways optimized. And that's a lot of the work we do with mitochondrial health and oxidative stress. And and we'll say, well, first we need some data. And this is where blood labs are really critical. What are your thoughts on getting blood labs ran and, and actually looking at markers before you just throw someone on something? So I think it's 100 percent. It has to happen. Uh, and I'll take it a step further. Like, you know, what I'm looking to do with a company that I'm involved in right now from like kind of, kind of an investment standpoint is. Bro, I want to, I, not only do I want to look at blood, I want to look at DNA. I want to look at polymorphisms. I want to understand every possible permutation that this person, male or female, may or may not run into 
before they go down this road, right? Because like you said, I mean, one of the points that you have in here is, t- is AI. So we're kind of skipping back and forth, but this is all amazing stuff. Th- that's what's available. I mean, now yeah. we're really getting into the biotechnology, the biomedical revolution, because you're right. Predictive analytics is, is available. You know, yeah. we have mapped the gene uh, code. We have mapped, you know, biological systems. We have back, back, mapped all of the cascade, the molecular cascades. I mean, we know, you know, to, within, you know, a pretty quick frame. And I know some people will debunk me and you, and they'll be like, Jay, epigenetics, epigenetics. And that's true lifestyle. But yeah. we definitely know that there are predictive, uh, you know, how would I say it? Uh, you know, outcomes based yeah. on people's gene codes, you know, being analyzed in, in the billions of, you know, uh, you know, what do you call it? Quantums per second or whatever. Why quanta per second? So like we can, you know, amalgamate all that and put it all together and a person can get a really good snapshot of what might happen. And so I agree, like, I think all of that should be done, you know, in advance of starting any of these things. Now, granted, I, you know, what is the risk, Reagan? You know, because obviously probably me and you didn't do that because we've been in the game for a long time and, you know, it still worked out pretty well for us. But I mean, if you can afford it and knowing now that we have the technology and again, saying afford it, it's more expensive now than it will be in five years, right? It's only sure. going to keep going down. Oh, it's yeah. Moore's law. Right. So it's like, you know, technology as it improves, as it gets faster and faster, price becomes more accessible. So, dude, I'm totally on it. You know, like I said, I mean, like that's one of the things I'm talking with Dr. Anthony J right now about is like, how do we make this so that it's part of the program? There's, you know, there is no getting around that, you know, because again, some people are going to say, oh, I can't afford that based on what the price might be now. But I think eventually, if you're a health optimization physician, a functional medicine person, that should be in your practice as standard as standard practice of care. Yeah. The other test that we're looking at is uh, we've, we've been using the gallery test, um, and that's predicting cancer uh, about four years before any other screenings will, because one of my philosophies is no death by neglect. So yeah, a lot of that. us are neglecting our health. And we're, we're actually, if, if the technology exists, then you are... You're, you're neglecting your own health if you're not taking advantage of it. We can have all the best breakthroughs, but you actually have to execute on it. And so uh, the gallery test has been helpful. The RGCC is actually a company out of Greece that can identify where these cancerous tumors, um, you know, where they exist and what they respond to from a chemotherapy perspective or even botanical perspective. Uh, I think that's pretty fascinating. And then uh, the other thing that we're finding very helpful is the true age test. I, I know you, you know we have a mutual friend in Ryan Smith. Yep. And uh, he's been on my podcast quite often. Where he was just the, online three weeks ago. <laughs> oh yeah, he's great. He talks so fast. I mean, he's he can he can rattle off medical terminology like no one's business. I'm like, tell me what nootropics you're taking, bro. Slow no down, Ryan. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm, we're, I love we're, Ryan. Dude, Ryan and I have been friends since 2014. I know you know that, but like, I mean, we still joke about, I remember the first day they were at A4M literally yep. back in 2014. And you probably remember it too. And we, and you're like looking at their booth and you're like, they're selling all these, you know, at that point in time, we're like, you know, not, we'll call them illegal, but like, whoa, right? Like, yeah. how are they getting away with this? Totally. Yeah. They got away with it for seven years. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah. Pretty until amazing. they made a, until they made a, you know, let's just be honest. They m- literally made an example out of Jeremy. That's what they, they did. Really did. Yeah. It was sad. Yeah. It was too bad. But, um, but now he's, you know, his true age, they're uh, legit. I mean, the testing that they're doing is phenomenal. If you want to look at the methylation patterns in the DNA, um, these are really important, but uh, stool tests, we talk meta- metabolomics uh, is is amazing. But if you don't have the right test, then you're playing guessing games with your health. And if you really want to see what pathways are blocked, then get the right test ran. And to your point on the DNA, your your nutritional needs are going to be far different than mine based on what polymorphisms I have or don't have uh, based on my methylation patterns. These are all really critical things. And that's how we can influence the epigenome. So, you know, is it the genetics? Is it the epigenome? Um, I think it's both, you know, and, and have you studied the nine hallmarks of aging much or do you? Yeah, do you, let's, uh, let's check this out. It's so funny you just said that. Uh, I just got this book. Uh, I mean, I'm, I know you're familiar with it too, but I just got her newest book. The uh, Kaufman Protocol, the Aging Solutions. Yeah, 
I'm actually not familiar with that. That's great. Oh, you're yeah. not? Oh, no, dude. You got to yeah. you gotta get uh, Sandra Kaufman. So she's been on my yeah. podcast too. Okay. But she, so she you know, breaks them all down, right? So her first book, I don't know where it is right now, um, is a little bit less depth of this one. But then this one is all of those uh, hallmarks you know, broken down and like understood for a lay person. She's a genius uh, physician, but she has this amazing ability to break it down for pretty much everyone. So I love her stuff. I'll send you links um, to her stuff after the show, but uh, I'm, I'm deep into it. Okay. I'd love that. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Cause the nine hallmarks of aging, if you, uh, if you can get ahead of that before aging catches up to you, um, and you know, even following that, you know, there's, uh, I, I don't remember all of them, but there's stem cell exhaustion, there's cellular senescence, there's a lack of nutrient sensing in the body. So we just okay. don't absorb the nutrients. There's loss of proteostasis. So the protein synthesis that, that starts to diminish. But if you can get on top of those, uh, markers, uh, testing will get you there 10 times faster. Yes. And then we can deploy the right peptides based on what your tests reveal instead of, based on a subjective analysis of, well, I just don't feel like I'm as focused as I'd like to be, or my endurance is lagging. So, um, so I find that to be a core tenet because one of my main goals is I want to help people in 10 years from now. So I, I look and I say, okay, where are you now? And where do you want to go in 10 years from now? And how can I help your next decade be your healthiest decade? And that's where testing is the foundation for everything. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. To talk about just a fast forward from testing. Well, so, I mean, that's another thing though, too, dude, let's not leave. And I know I'm, I'm, I'm watching the clock. I know you got to be out here in like 25 minutes. Uh, we'll get through everything, but, um, dude, not enough people understand testing and yeah. there's also a fear of it, right? Like, again, a lot of people, if they come to you, it's part of the deal, right? But like, there's a lot of people out there that would be coming to you and, and consulting with somebody like me if they weren't so fearful of getting tested, you know, just independently. Right. And, and I always tell people like, look, understand what you're working with, right? Like get a basic screening at a private MD labs or direct labs or lab corp request or any of these places. I mean, again, it's like ordering a book off of Amazon. Right. But dude, people are so fear based around it because again, they don't understand how to read it. You know, I, yeah. I tell them all the time. I, I mean, I'm at a place now where I don't really respond to people unless they're members of my private group on questions if they just, you know, randomly message me. But every now and then, you know, my assistant or, you know, people that are kind of like looking at stuff will just be like, hey, man, privatemdlabs.com forward slash J-A-Y-C created three labs, basic, intermediate, you know, high level, like, you know, depending on your economic condition and just do it and then literally screen YouTube and say, how do I read my labs? Right. There's a thousand videos. Right. But it's like, dude, people are just, people are just so apprehensive about looking at lab work. And, you know, I think it, there's a huge, you know, if there's a win to be had, there's a way, if there's gotta be a way for some, some of us to really break this down in a much more simplistic fashion so that people aren't so fear-based when it comes around to like looking at their labs. I'm telling you, dude, most people, don't get any f form of health screening because they're so afraid of not understanding how to read their labs. I mean, I get executives, <laughs> very successful business people, you know, who say to me, dude, I have no idea how to read that shit. It's like, they, it, it, I mean, again, it, it, I mean, it's English, right? It's not like they're reading Spanish or uh, Italian, but it's like they just see the lab ranges and then they see the numbers and they just blank out. Right. They, you know, it's like uh, my doctor will help me. And it's like, no, dude, like your doctor can help you, but you need to understand this stuff so that you don't get misled. Because I mean, again, and I don't want to make this conversation about that, but you know this, a lot of doctors don't know the things that you and I talk about. They're not yeah. trained about that stuff in medical school. They don't understand the difference between free testosterone and total testosterone mm -hmm. yeah. or hemoglobin or hematocrit or any of these things. They're not trained about that stuff. Yeah. So it's like, the you is the end user. I always like to say this. You have to become the proactive scientist of your own health. 
Yeah. So there's like a basic level of awareness that you must possess, you know, before you go to see you or any great, amazing, you know, functional medicine doctor, because if you don't, how are you ever going to learn anything? Yeah. 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 You're leaving it up to, uh, you know, hope. And, and this is where that, that death by neglect, it's like, well, yeah, you're just, you're, you're hoping that there's nothing serious going on and you're like, well, I feel good. But, uh, the number one (laughs) symptom of, you know, how do you know if you're having a heart attack? Well, the first symptom is death. That's, and then, and then then by then, by then it's a little too late. The second symptom is like, Oh, I'm short of breath and my left arm hurts, you know, but most people just die. (laughs) Hope is not a strategy, Reagan. (laughs) No. Unless, unless you're the Obama campaign, that was a strategy that worked. <laughs> I'll never forget that. We were all so duped. My God, I think we talked about that on your podcast about how the yeah. Obama healthcare plan was literally the greatest oh. tax levy scam in the history of the world. Jeez. In the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it not amazing. even debatable. <laughs> all right. Talk so pe- <laughs> peptides. Um, now, when I talked to you, you kind of baffled me because like, I didn't know that there was anybody out there doing what you do, which is like, you were already doing pre stem cell treatment peptide protocols. You know, yeah. I remember I was going to be like all highfalutin and say, well, you know, my business partner and I are talking to docs about that. And you were like, bro, I've been doing that for years. I'm like, what? <laughs> so, so, I mean, can you kind of maybe talk a little bit about that? Because Remember, my audience is super peptide based and educated, so we don't have to go down, you know, that path. I mean, obviously, still there's so many people, but you know, I've been talking peptides now for three years, so they're pretty aware. But maybe talk, share a little bit about how, you know, your practice. You guys are like really at the fucking, I'll just say, at the top of the, you're the top end of the spectrum, tip of the sphere, because you're doing this. But maybe talk a little bit about that, like what you guys target before somebody comes in to do a stem cell treatment with you with peptides. Well, I think the the very first thing we look at is is uh, we run blood labs and we say, where are the big interferences? So it, uh, there's biotoxin interferences, there's interferences that show up from inflammation, and then there's deficiencies that need to be corrected because it's the environment that makes uh, all the difference. If you read Bruce Lipton's book, Biology of Belief, he was the very first doctor to help see that uh, stem cells are influenced by the environment in which they're in. And so when we're trying to get your body's own stem cells engaged in a healing process, um, you want to make sure that things are tidy there. So two things that happen that most people miss when it comes to regeneration. Well, number one is that you need good vascularity in the area. So our knees, where people's knees go bone on bone, usually you'll see there's a loss of good blood vessels, vascularity. So we say, what peptides create angiogenesis? Well, uh, BPC, thymus and beta-4, those are a couple of real basic ones. But the other peptide that uh, gets overlooked is ARA290 because that's working on the red blood cells, pulling them directly out of the bone marrow. And then testosterone does the same thing. And so if your hormones aren't optimized, if you don't have your peptide pathways optimized, you're not going to get the same impact. So that's kind of the foundational. The second thing that gets missed is you have infections in joints. And so um, Staphylococcus is one of the most common bacterial species, Staphylococcus aureus. If you look at some of the uh, research, they've done biopsy on, on knees that have been replaced. And in virtually every single case of a bone on bone or osteoarthritic knee, they'll find little pockets of Staphylococcus aureus. And so what uh, peptide works for for that? Well, we think LL37, right? The antimicrobial peptide. And that peptide's only made by humans. So it's not made by any other mammal out there, but it's a peptide that's a cathelicidin. So it's universal. And that means it can selectively destroy bacteria that doesn't belong in your body. And it also can break through biofilms. So it has a way of sensing where bacteria hidden to most antibiotics or antimicrobials the LL37 has these selective properties where it can break through the biofilm and eradicate it. So, so those are just a couple of the treatments that we deploy. And then sarcopenia is a, is a big problem where people start losing muscle mass and it's exchanged for fat. And that's where the sarcotropin IPA is, uh, is a really good formula. Have you used the sarcotropin IPA before? Are you familiar with that liquid? I haven't used it personally myself, but I am familiar with it. Yeah, you may want to give it a try. When I first tried it, I was skeptical because we actually ran the the numbers on it. 
And I was like, how can you use a, a GHRP2 and a GHRP6? How is any of that growth hormone, those growth hormone releasing peptides, how's that going to make it through the gastric secretions, right? And and actually, because only about 2 to 3% gets absorbed, but what they did in the manufacturing of it is they put in about 2 to 300% more uh, GHRP2 and GHRP6 uh, than you would do in an injection form, and that's how the absorption gets improved. And then you've got the L-citrulline, the L-arginine, you've got D3, K2, you've got some nootropics in uh, the DMAO, um, and then you've got the uh, alpha-GPC so it's it's actually a really good formula. So we'll use that as well to help get rid of some of those sarcopenic tendencies. What what uh, all amazing stuff, man! Like I said, tip of the spear stuff. Um, just off the t- off the cuff, what is your favorite actual fat loss peptide? And let me let me granularly d- drill down on this. And I know it's um, it's a loaded question, but yeah. obviously, men who have belly fat. Tessa Morellin, right? I mean, you know, based on its mechanism oh, yeah. of action, based on a grift, uh, based on, you know, what they created it for with the guys that have lipodystrophy who have HIV, blah, blah, blah. But I get women who ask me this a lot. And it's kind of a weird question, you know, because, and again, these are, you know, educated peptide using women, familiar with MOTC, obviously familiar with IPA and CJC, uh, you know, familiar with um, five amino, you know, again, different kind of pathways. But do you have a peptide, like if a woman comes to you and says, oh, you know, I don't have belly fat, but, you know, I have regional body fat deposition. I'm a woman, you know, it's a the yeah. glute ham tie-in, blah, blah, blah. What's best, Jay? And should I inject locally? You know, I know everybody says to inject sub-Q around the belly button, you know, suprilic, whatever. But like if I'm a woman and I have fat in my hips and my buttocks and that's like the one weak spot or my real struggle, you know, f- uh, you know stubborn area. Should I inject into that area? I mean, what would be your answer to someone like that? Man, uh, well, um, it, once again, it would come back to the lab work, and I hate to, yeah. you know, yeah. give, I hate to sound like a uh, you know boring scientist and give you an, an abstract answer, but uh, you know, if they have any uh, insulin resistance, because um, yeah. there's three hormones that are going to cause the fat storage. You know, you got to look at insulin, you got to look at estrogens, yep. and you, you also need to look at uh, any issues with cortisol. And so, sure. um, but in general, the GLP ones, um, you know, yeah, those, those will I knock left it those off. <laughs> that's just like, I feel like that's cheating. Um, <laughs> Dude, it is, it is. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below, thepeptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. Well, it's funny you just said that because I'm writing a book right now that I'm, you know, hopeful. I'm going to jinx it right now by putting it into the ether, but I'm writing a book called 30 Days to Shreds. And it sounds like a bro fitness, you know, book, but it's not. It's going to be a fat loss book using cheat codes, using the greatest, you know, biomedical hacks that we've ever been given. And maybe I'll just go a little bit deeper on you because it's relevant right now. And you're the guy to talk to this about. But I know you've seen Dr. Peter Atia attacking the GLP-1 agonist. Oh, now, yeah. And, oh, yeah. and it's, a, it's a disgrace. Now, again, I'm not saying he's a disgrace, but, you know, he's always the, the guy in the mainstream, you know, tackling the studies that have been released. And again, as you know, Reagan, always fat, obese, metabolically dysregulated, dysregulated, comorbid patient population yeah. group, right? Yes. As you know, and I just did a video about this literally yesterday. I haven't put it out yet to my audience. Maybe I'll edit it based on your answer, but dude, most people that do this are doing this wrong. Okay. And and again, we're not, we're not, we're not disparaging doctors, even though you and I could do that. But you and I both know that the average person that's using a GLP-1 agonist is obese. Okay, let's just be honest. Okay. They're not like me and you. They're not your patients. They're not looking for health optimization. They're destitute. They're, they're metabolically dysregulated. They have type 2 diabetes. Again, they're comorbid and they're usually obese. And so then their doctors prescribe these things to them. And then, dude, that's when the buck stops. Yeah. They don't give them any advice on how to actually lose body fat correctly. They don't talk to them about protein consumption and living insulin controlled and exercising and, like you said, taking all these tests to see what their problems are. They just prescribe these drugs to these people and then they stop eating. Yeah. 
Yeah, and exactly. They crash their thyroid, bro. They crash their thyroid. They yeah, lose muscle. muscle. Goes away. Yes, they become sarcopenic. Yeah. Exactly. It's and ridiculous. so, yeah. and then, and you know, and then you know, Atia and all of his cronies, they go out there and they bash GLP one agonists. And so now, what happens is the fat person, the man or woman who watches the evening news, which you know you shouldn't be doing, right? You know, <laughs> news flash. But I mean, they watch it. And then they're instantly rejected from these amazing drugs, which you just said, right. they're literally cheat codes. It, 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 I mean, dude, you know how many times I've had this conversation with very smart people? I could not write this book four years ago yeah, because these things weren't available, Reagan. No, no. Yeah, they were just scratching the surface on what right. they could do. And, and, right. and so we go back to that person who, you know, they're relatively fit. Let's imagine they're, they don't have any metabolic syndrome going on. Right. Um, no comorbidities. And I would say that, um, uh, like using some, uh, MIC, you know, the, the methionine and acetal yes. choline, injecting that into the, the fat areas using some AOD 9604. You can use it as a cream, a topical, you can inject it there. We've seen a lot of really powerful benefits, uh, from that combination. And then, you know, but once again, it's, it's so hard to say, you already mentioned all the, the great peptides that can help with fat burning, but I do have an affinity to ARA290 because uh, it helps with the cardiovascular system. If you want to be able to run farther, right. uh, I'm a big mountain biker, skier, sure. snowboarder. And so yeah. um, endurance is a favorite of mine. I do a lot of strength training too, but endurance is, is where it's at for me. I get in the flow state. Um, if that's your thing, then I would throw ARA290 in there and change up your exercise routine. A lot of people forget the basics like, oh yeah, actually, we, you do need to move your body more. Uh, you need to eat the, the great food. You need to stress out less. It's like the boring things that no one wants to talk about. No, of course. And, and by the way, dude, I'm glad you said that. Cause like, I, again, disclaimer, you can't get any benefit with any of these magic substances. If you don't have the basics styled in, right. Yeah. If you're not living insulin controlled, you're not getting six to eight hours of deep restorative sleep every night. If you're not, you know, proofing or, you know, proof, how do I say it? bulletproofing your house of emf radiation yeah. and and wi-fi you know dirty electromagnetic fields i mean you and i talked about on your podcast like how bad people are driving around in, in teslas their their, right. their bodies are being zapped <laughs> <laughs> and that nobody mean, talks yes. about this stuff right <laughs> right but i mean all of this stuff is like basic 101 level stuff and if you don't have any of that it's not going to matter. And, yeah. and, you know, and you know this too, it's the same thing. You, you kind of said it with the testing already. You know, all these people, they don't want to look at their hormones, yeah. but they want to take the magic bullet peptide, whether it's MOTC or Ipamorelin or Tessamorelin or, you know, AR290 or whatever it is. And it's like, yeah. dude, you are a metabolic disaster. Let's, None let's of these things there. are yeah. jack until you get stuff under control. And I, you know, it's always important when I talk to guys like you to say like, look, man, like you can't just expect these things to be magic bullets. But bro, I'm telling you again, Pete, I would argue that Peter Atia is doing a bigger disservice because when people see that and they think like, well, wait a minute, if so-and-so my neighbor's friends, uncle, cause you know, there's so many people on these things. They can't oh, even yeah. keep, they can't even keep their appetite in stock. A uh, hundred million Americans have used it. Dude, Isn't that crazy. We're 330 million. And these guys places. out there annihilating it, saying it only loses muscle. Stop it. We yeah. don't know. The long -term well, effect. Dude, well, it's crazy. That's where it's like, well, throw in, uh, throw in CJC 1295, throw in MK677. Anything, bro. Get some growth hormone going. Get Build the muscle. Like there's ways of doing this where we see. They it. don't tell them. And that's the point. You're right. This is what's lost. And this is, of yeah. course, you know, as my good friend, Dr. Rob always says, if it bleeds, it leads. Yeah. They want to fear people. Yeah. So now, dude, I'm telling you, I literally, the number one question that I've gotten in the last three weeks, that's why I just made the video for my audience is what do we do about the long-term negative ramifications of rebound weight gain from using GLP and GIP agonists? And it's like, no, dude, there isn't any, if you do this right, but they're not I, doing it right. Well, and, uh, I, I'm, uh, uh, you know, not to discredit the studies, but the studies were 68 weeks. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not going to leave anyone on it for 68 weeks. It's going to be 
<laughs> you know, you got to cycle the peptides, you know, you got to get the Megan, light- I'll discredit the studies for you. <laughs> okay. Well, 68 weeks of being That's on uh, the drug. It's like, well, no wonder there is a rebound effect because, you know, they got, they, they became dependent on the medication. Of course, of so, course. But again, none of those people, if you and I interviewed those people, I would wager my literal existence that not a single one of them was actually doing the things that they also needed to do in conjunction with using those drugs. Bro, think about this. And and, and, and by the way, I know we have a couple more points and we, you have literally like five minutes, but we'll do another podcast. I'll bring you on because this is amazing. But dude, yeah. just but think about this though. Like how many of those people actually were eating correctly? I would even go further than this. I would say how many of those people weren't eating because bro, you and I both know if you're 350 pounds and you're morbidly obese and you literally are one foot in the grave right now, you know, your physician is like, look, if you don't lose weight, you're going to die. That's what they say. Right. So now they're on this GLP one agonist and it's working because it works. I'm not hungry. Why would they eat? Think about it. They don't know what correct weight loss is. They just see the scale and their pant size is dropping and right. they're, the hap- they're happier than a pig and shit. Why are they going to do it right? But again, if they're not coached and this is where the breakdown is yeah. and this is what happens. And so all of those people, every time I see Peter or Tia slips moving, I just want to like, ah, because it's like, bro, stop. You're, yeah. you're literally creating more sensationalism than you need to do. This is insane. Right. And you know, he's this brilliant guy. I mean, you know that he knows. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but he doesn't yeah. help anybody. I mean, I have so many people now messaging me who are fat, who desperately need to use these things, who are afraid yeah. to use them, bro. They're literally right. like, oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Um, it, it's ridiculous because uh, the people who need it most, they need to know how to yes. do it the right way. And yeah. even though the studies, it, it, they always say with lifestyle interventions, you know, if you read through the, the journals, but then it's like, well, what are those lifestyle interventions? <laughs> And usually it's like they're in a caloric deficit, which you're going to lose weight either way. I just tell people, but we don't like to leave someone on it more than 90 days at the most. And then we pull them off and we're like, now we're going to work on your fitness because there's a difference between having great weight and great health. And so that's exactly just, right. Well, look, let's because just the scale out. looks good. Doesn't mean Dude, that let's you just put that out there right now. Cause it, it, this is a great podcast. Uh, if you're going to do this, you got to eat enough grams of protein per pound of lean body weight. We're not saying per pound of body weight because we understand if you're 350 pounds, but you're 45% body fat, then you maybe only have 180 to 190 pounds of lean tissue. So that's your protein requirement. Yep. You got to do some cardio. You got to do some bone bearing resistance training. Yeah, You got to sleep. I yeah. mean, there's, you know, there's all these things. I've had fat people say, well, you know, the, the terzopathide is so amazing. It, it wires me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laying there staring at the ceiling. So I wake up and I do more. I'm like, no, bro, you got to sleep. But I mean, again, you're right. You yeah. go through the, the studies and you, and you, and you look at the lifestyle interventions and there's no lifestyle interventions. Yeah. And, and dude, if you interviewed every one of those people, they all would say to you, oh, I was only eating once a day. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's like, what? You're going to lose weight. If you're, eat, if you're in a caloric deficit for that long, you're going to lose weight. And we go back to that, that woman who was, talking to you, you know, one of the things that, that I'm a big fan of is, as you know, is epitalin Yep. and and epitalin resets the hypothalamic adrenal pituitary response. And so it, it takes the stress out of people's nervous system. And then if you put some bioregulators in as some foundational medicine, it's a great way of going about it. So maybe she could take like the lady complex, which has you know, specific, you know, cause it works on the ovaries, which helps stabilize the estrogens. It works on the thyroid for metabolism. And then it works on the vessels for better circulation. But, but yeah, I think there's, um, you know, thinking of things, not using peptides so much as a, a treatment to, you know, like a drug, like right. trizepatide or Manjuro or Ozembic, you know, yeah. they're, they're great, but use them to optimize a pathway temporarily, you know, get someone out of the food uh, addiction, you know, use some Selenc and yep. use the GOP ones short term as you're building muscle at the same time you're going to get a much better 
uh, result and it's going to be permanent because yeah, I grew up on a farm. So my dad used to say anything worth doing is worth doing well if That's I try right. a shitty job on something, which many times I did. And so uh, it's no different in health. It's like, let's fix things for good. And man, there's a faster way than 68 weeks on a, a single peptide. That, <laughs> yeah, <that's- laughs> Dude, I know it's always, you know, the devil is in the details. Um, just personal question. Do you like, are you even using semaglutide now in comparison to terzapatide with certain patients or you've just switched to terzapatide because it's more effective? Well, it, it is more effective in the literature. I mean, the you, you, the hemoglobin A1C dropped, yeah. you know, uh, yep. more. The weight loss was uh, more yep. on the terzapatide, but um, it just hasn't been around as long because yeah. you're taking a yeah. GLP-1 and a GIP. Right. Yeah. And so we are very uh, reluctant. We use yeah. it very sparingly. We're still, you know, and we're 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 pretty sparing on the you know semaglutide. Yeah. Even. Well, so look. So personally, are you cool to keep going to twelve? Yeah. Yeah. You're you're good. Yep. You're going at six minutes. Okay. So so I've been using terzapatide. Obviously, I used semaglutide for a whole year. Uh, you know, on and off. My wife and I both used it. Um, again, very effective. I was also using it in combination with tesofensine. You know. Same thing you said, right. yeah. 90 to 120 days. Uh, and then I would, you know, take an equal time off. By the way, the test of fencing, we could talk about that if you want. Well, I'll just have you on and we'll do another podcast. I and love we'll do a it. Yeah. Bro, I love it. It's my it's favorite, crazy. by far my favorite peptide. When people ask me, what is the best nootropic peptide? I say, well, this is going to sound kind of weird, test of fencing because of the BDNF stimulation. It's unreal. Right. Yeah. Well, you get dopamine, you get serotonin and you get epinephrine. So... And by the way, I don't know if you've noticed this. And again, this was in the literature anyway, but dude, you can cold turkey it and there's no effect. Uh, it doesn't have any receptor attenuation. It's unreal. Yeah. Like yeah. you said, we are in the golden age of biomedical technology. If mm-hmm. people know how to use this, and obviously people like you are, you know, people like you and me and other physicians like you have to be the guys out there at the forefront, you know, the keepers of the sacred fire teaching people how to use these in combination. Cause again, as I always say, the difference between a pill and a poison is the dosage, yeah. right? And so it's like people have to understand how to use these responsibly cycle on and off of them, take actual time off. That's effective. I love how you said 90 days, you know, cause I've seen, I, look, I've seen some docs, you know, with really obese people again, doing it right losing weight effectively, keep them on for four to six months. Again, because it's a psychological boost for the, for the patient. Oh yeah. But again, like you said, it, 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 we have to understand peptides cause antibody buildup. There is a down regulation of anything. What goes up must come down. So right. it's kind of like, you know, we have to educate these people, but I have seen some really obese people have magical results again, doing it correctly. And I've seen some doctors keep them on, uh, you know, between four and six months. But I love that, you know, 90 days is always like the optimal range for any peptide. I yep. mean, again, I've always said that. I've always felt the same thing. You see okay. less results after about 10 to 12 weeks than you yep. did in the first four to eight. Yeah. Yep. And we even see better when we are shifting every 30 days because then the, you know, biology, our bodies are lazy. You know, we yes. want to we want to get conditioned and adapt as quickly as possible. So I don't want my patients to adapt. So I shock the system. We go, you know, let's work on the HPA axis. Oh, now we're going to work on the growth hormone. Oh, now we're going to work on the mitochondria. So, so yeah, no, there's, you know, think of biology and, and then we just want to put the inputs in at the right time before the body gets kind of complacent. I want to do another podcast with you um, and break down various peptides and get your insights on them. Cause yeah. again, you are a master of this stuff. Um, just final statement. Um, your thoughts on bioregulators, a, are you using them right now with your patients and B, you know, I've, I'm sure you've seen the inexplicable breaking of the wall between Russia and the U S in just the last <laughs> six months. They're essentially now flooding the market. I just did a podcast with Phil Mikens, Ben Greenfield did a podcast oh, yeah. with Phil, you know, yep. Phil, I mean, it's unreal what they can do, but are you using them with your patients right now? Or are you still kind of like more yeah. peptide, you know, waiting? to get more research and data because there's tons of research in Russia on them, but we don't have much in the West. Yeah. And a lot of the research just hasn't been translated yet. And, you know, I, I study Eastern medicine, so I'm, I'm actually, I'm pretty good at, at sniffing out the good therapy. So we've used bioregulators all along as the foundational. So, so we say the foundational medicine is the bioregulators and that's what keeps all the pathways optimized. And then we use the peptides to really shift the body and move it in a bigger direction to a 
better future. So yeah, we use them all and we could, we could go on, um, quite, quite. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll message you. I'll text you. Cause I know you got to get back to your retreat, but, um, bro, amazing. I'm sorry. I was 10 minutes late, but again, no, no, I wish we had it every two hours. I mean, I love talking to you. I know, so I know. And it's so great. deep. And when you and I can go so deep and geek out on all this stuff, but I'll message you. Um, dude, honestly, I'll probably, I want to have you back on right away. What I might do with you is I may just do two weeks in a row. So we'll just like have this one first. And then the second one is just like you and I going through peptides and it'll just blow your practice up too, because so many people, I mean, honestly, I didn't tell you this. The book has exploded. Oh, you you know, I was on the mind pump podcast. I did three episodes. Only one is run. We, you know, we went so deep on peptides and I blew those oh, guys' great. minds. And so dude, this is everywhere now. Great. Like peptides yeah. is mainstream consciousness now. Yeah. You know, I mean, maybe not in a good way sometimes, because again, a lot of people see them as magic bullets. And again, it takes people like you and I to tell them that no ease back, right? Like there's a lot of other contiguous factors that you got to take into concern, but bro, amazing. Um, if somebody wants to work with you, obviously work with your business, connect with you. What is the easiest way for them to do that? Uh, easiest way is you can email me, uh, Reagan, R-E-G-A-N at AccuEastWest.com or just go to the peptideexpert.com and we have a bunch of free downloads and resources. I've got a new book coming out next week awesome. called the peptide blueprint. And I'll get that to you as soon as I get it in, I'll send it over to you, Jay. Um, I think you'll love it. Um, but yeah, awesome. you guys want to see that. We'll, we'll give you an opportunity to get some great knowledge. Yeah, dude, for sure. I mean, and I have your other book that you did, the PDF or whatever. I, I, I used, I looked at that a lot, you know, before I finished my book and put it into the ether. But thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Reagan. So guys and gals, support the amazing people that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. Visit Reagan at his website, thepeptideexpert.com. And of course, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.